all set, ready to go. We're about to start the three caves. We made it to the first hut. Fancy. Oh my god. G'day guys, today we are about to embark on a four day adventure here in Tasmania, the famous Three Capes track. It's a four day, three night hike going 48 kilometers along the Tasman Peninsula, one of the most beautiful parts of the entire country of Australia. Before we go on though, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're gonna keep bringing out adventure videos every week. But for now, we're at the visitor center. It's time to check in and get ready for the hike. To get here early like we did, they let you put your bags in these lockers here. They're plenty big enough to put any size backpacks in there and they even give you some $2 coins so you can actually use the lockers. So you don't have to pay for that if you booked on the three caves. After you've checked in, the next step is to jump on a little boat and cruise out to Denman Bay, which is where we're heading to now. As part of the three caves track, you get a little cruise included on the way out there, which is gonna be pretty nice, even on this gray and wet day. Volcanic, so that means once upon a time it once was a volcanic liquid magma, but it wasn't actually shot out of the ground to a volcano. Day one, we just got dropped off on the beach and we're gonna hit the trail right now. Come along for the journey. This is it, the three cape sign. The beginning of our four day hike. We've got all the gear that we need. We've got food, we've got warm clothes, dry clothes, because <laughs> it's going to be pretty wet today and tomorrow. But we do not have the tent, our sleeping mats, cooker, pots and pans, because it is all provided for us. Sorry, yeah. our bags feel so light. Super light, <laughs> haven't even done up the harnesses or anything. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very mellow four kilometers to the first yeah. hut today. So we're just going to cruise, take our time and yeah. enjoy the forest. <laughs> Surveys Cove. We've made it all the way to there. This is halfway for the day. We've only got 1.7 kilometers to go. Look at these manicured stairs. Every rock is perfectly placed. We didn't stop at Surveys Beach because it was just a bit rainy. The rocks were slippery and we thought we'd just have lunch at the hut and then we can fully relax. But uh, if it's a sunny day, that spot is halfway on day one. So a great spot to stop for lunch. We've made it to the first hut, Surveys Hut. Looks like we're staying at some like, fancy accommodation with the timber and the tin. I'm the uh, bottom one. I've got the cattle on too. We just checked in with the ranger and we've been allocated a room and she's put the kettle on. So she said, go drop her bags off, come back and she'll show us around and we can get a cup of tea. The dorms are four beds per <laughs> section with a memory foam mattress, some hooks and a benched bridge bag. So the first site here, they've got barbecue. So if you want to have a big cook up, you've got to bring all your heavy food on day one, throw it on there and have a mean feed and get all energized for the next day's hike. In the kitchen hut, there's multiple gas cookers, kettles, pots and pans, and utensils for you to use. Day two now, we're all packed up. We've hit the trail. It was a great stay last night. That cabin is very lush, very luxurious. Oh, the beds are so comfortable, oh, hey? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Memory foam, so just like. Made a huge difference to our sleep last night. <laughs> yeah. We've got a really cool group too. Everyone's yeah. super friendly, really good conversations last night, this morning. So that's making a big difference too. Everyone's in a really good mood yeah. and looking out for each other, which is cool. So today we're going along to the next cabin and we got an information book right at the beginning when we checked in. And so today Today is where you pull out the information book and you read through the different stories along the way. There's points where you can stop and learn about the animals, the history, as well as all the native plants in the area and things like that. So today we, are you laughing at me because I couldn't say flora and flora, flora, flora and fauna, flora and flora, whatever the plants people, you learn about the plants. And so today we'll pull that out and have a read along the way. And there's chairs, I think, stopping points or viewpoints. So yeah. We don't know what's in store for us and we're excited, so let's get on the trail. Short now, 11 Ks, four hours. Looking out for 
Wombats. made it to the first lookout. This is the bay that we were in yesterday on the boat. So the historical site for Port Arthur is just over there. That's where you leave from. And the boat tour took you around this point. Keep going back here across the bay and then followed this bay and it dropped you off at the beach right down there. Awesome weather today. It's absolutely beautiful, a stunning day. This is another reason why we left early because we just want to enjoy the viewpoints and not have the beaming sun at midday. We're on the platform of where the hell are we? This is where we are. This is the crossroads on the Three Capes track. If you head that way, which is the direction we're going, get some Munro cabin and then onwards to Cape Pillar and the Blade. If you keep going behind me, it goes to the next cabin, which is called Retacuna or Retacuna. And you go that way, it's only like 10 minutes to the next cabin. Or if you go this way, it goes back to Fortescue Bay which is we're actually finishing our hike, but we're not gonna go that way or that way. We're gonna keep on going this way to Munro. Look at that mushroom. And we've just made it to the Munro hut. This is where we're gonna stay for night two and I'll show you guys around. Oh my God. Holy moly. So this is Munro Hut. This is the kitchen area where we boil our water and make our meals. This is where the dorms are. The rangers cleaned the rooms already. So this is ours, number nine. Yeah, we have it all to ourselves tonight. This is the spiral shell shower. This is the only place on the three cakes where you can have a hot shower. I mean, the fact that you can have a hot shower while you're out in the middle of nature hiking is pretty ridiculous, but we will take it. We're gonna test that out later. But here's how it works. There's a bush shower. It even says, you'll figure it out for yourselves. But what you do is you fill your bucket with hot water. I'm guessing that's the hot water. Then you bring it on in here. Knock, knock. Not walking in on anyone. Come into this cool shell thing. Whoa. You lower this down using this pulley system. And then you fill that up and turn it on. And that's your shower. It's actually brilliant. Really cool. I wouldn't mind getting one of these for our house on Magnetic Island when we uh, eventually build it. I like it. I'm just having a look at the booklet. For lunch, we've chosen cheese and crackers. That has been an easy option, hasn't it? I love it. A lot of people think that cheese needs to be kept in the fridge. These people are wrong. <laughs> cheese is perfect for going on hiking trips. And when we did the overland track, we had cheese for the whole eight days that we were out on the track, the same block, and it was fine. It was totally fine. And we had cheese and crackers every day for lunch. We got to the second cabin in really good time. It was only like three and a half hours from the first hut. And that was going quite leisurely too. So considering we've got the entire afternoon to chill and hang out, we thought rather than just chill at the hut, what we do is go and check out the blade today. That's meant to be tomorrow's excursion on day three, but the weather is beautiful today and it's only meant to be an hour and a half or two hours one way to get to the blade where you get that beautiful view overlooking Cape Pillar. So that's what we've done. We've dropped our big bags off. We've just grabbed a little day pack. Can't really see it, but just a little day pack which they encourage you to bring with you. And we've got our hiking hats on as well. And we're going to go see what the blade looks like. Well, that was a cracker sunset up there on the Cape. I'm so glad we went out there to shoot. Now I've got to rush on back in the dark, but it's only 6K back there, so it shouldn't be too long. And then a uh, cheeky little bit of dinner before bed. Decided to have brekkie outside today. And I made the porridge good. Oh yeah, so typical camping breakfast, oats. 
oats with some coffee and that's what we usually do. It's raining right now but we're under some shelter so we decided to come out and enjoy the view instead of sitting inside. Day three of the Three Capes track today. We're having a bit of a lazy morning. It's like 10 o'clock now because last night staying out at the Blade for sunset was just magical, but it meant we put on like 25K and 40,000 steps in one day. So we did today's adventure yesterday. So we're not in a bit of a rush today and we woke up this morning for the most magical sunrise you could imagine. And then the heavens opened up, it just absolutely bucketed down and we were like, oh, what should we do today? Anyway, it's cleared up. You can see the cliffs behind us. So we're actually gonna go back out, maybe halfway to Cape Pillar and then make our way to the cabin for the afternoon and maybe go for a little bit of a mini adventure somewhere around the joint. Uh, but this hut here was pretty awesome. You got hot showers, which was a really nice surprise. And now it's just a matter of packing the bags and hitting the trail. Part of the experience, you can't wait around in the cabins and just hang there all day as there's another group coming through behind you. So this is a little hut when you go out to the Blade and Cape Pillar, you just drop your bag off here, you store it for the day and it gives a chance for the ranger to clean the kitchen, clean the rooms, disinfect everything for the next group who comes through behind us. And all our bags are out of his or her way. And yeah, you just pick them up on the way back and then continue to the next hut. find a bunch of Aboriginal artwork along the Three Caves track and we are actually standing on one right now. This boardwalk that we're walking on to go out to the Blade, this 2.4k structure, is actually shaped like the Aboriginal serpent. So from the dream time when the rainbow serpent used to carve its way around Australia making all the rivers and creeks and estuaries that you find in the country, that is what this story is built on. This bit of art that we're on, if you're up in a helicopter, you could look down and see the boardwalk snaking its way along Cape Pillar. We can see Tasman Island right there. Holy The crazy thing is we can hear the seals down below. They're like making all these noises and grunting and everything. The wind is not blowing our way, so we can't smell them, thank goodness. But apparently when you do get a woof of them, they're pretty stinky. You can definitely hear them. So keep your ears out and uh, hear, listen for the grunts and the sounds. We've just followed along the coastline and now we're going into the bushes and we're about to come out on the turn off to the blade and then we'll climb up the blade and have a look and then continue on and go to another lookout which looks back on the blade. We have made it to the intersection of the blade and then Cape Pillar. So Cape Pillar is this way and we're going to go see the blade to begin with. Climb up the blade and check out the view and then come back down and then go to Cape Pillar to look back on the blade. <laughs> coming down from the blade and now we're going to head out to Cape Pillar. You can hear the seals from that area as well. You can hear them making all those noises. What noises do they make, Jazz? <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. How cool is that, Leish? I can't probably look down. My heart... I'm not even scared of spot heights. I didn't think I was. Oh, it's insane. <sighs> Here we are, back where we stored our bags. So now we just grab our bags. There they are up the top. A lot of people have already got their bags and headed on to the next hut. Back at the hut. It turned out to be such a nice day. So don't underestimate the day. If it starts off rainy, it could turn out so beautiful. 
We've just made it back to Munro Hut and we're just enjoying the view for the very last time and we're heading to Hut 3 for tonight which is only about three kilometres away so it's not a long walk at all, maybe about an hour. So we're going to hit the road now and get there and make a cup of tea and enjoy. How good is this weather? Oh my gosh, we've got so lucky. So nice. We got time on our side. We're in a state of home. Honey, you So when you get to every hut, you have to check your name off on this checkboard checklist. So, pen going everywhere. There we are. Room nine. Tick. We made it. And it tells you who the ranger is at the station and what time the briefing is at. The briefing's just about the information for the height for tomorrow and what to expect. And here's our route. Makes it over five. this place on. Do you feel how we got something strong? Give you guys a little bit of a tour inside the kitchen hut here. Got a heater for tonight to do all your cooking and everything supplied for you. So you've got kettles and stove tops and all this kind of good stuff. USB chargers, which is fantastic because this GoPro is flat and so is my phone. So I'm going to juice up these things. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing the three capes. You don't actually have to bring any power banks if you don't want to. You don't have to worry about your stuff going flat because they've got power here for you. Each hut has books, games and yoga mats to stretch on in the evenings. Now I'm going to show you guys the toilets. So this is the compost toilets. There's four of them at each cabin. So one, two, three, four. A sink in the middle with two basins. And practically you do your business. You put toilet paper in the toilet and your business. Nothing else and shut the lid and exit the toilet. That is it. It does not smell because there's electric fans. It's actually a really clean toilet. I, yeah, it's been the cleanest one that we've come across. Having vegetable curry laksa, courtesy of these guys, Stry Foods. They make some mad dehydrated meals. Highly recommended. Smells delicious. Very nice. Oh yeah, something I whipped up earlier. Cooking and dishes. I know. Good morning guys, it's day four. This is our very last day. Today we're hiking to Fortescue Bay. That's the end point where the bus will take us back to Port Arthur. But this morning we are going to enjoy the sunrise and have our coffee on the helipad. If you feel lonely, I will be here and wait for the sun. It's getting Goodbye, closer, but it Okay, we are off. It is eight o'clock and we are ready to go. This was a lovely hut as well. Now, the challenge is up there. 14 kilometers to Fortescue Bay. Go, the steps. Up, up, up. So we have about 260 meters to go up in 2.2 kilometers. It's actually a really nice incline for the distance that it is. We're just going to take our time and enjoy it and just take in everything. There's no need to rush. So green. The section we're walking through now is the only temperate rainforest on the entire Tasman Peninsula. So it's very similar to walking through Cradle Mountain or some of those more alpine regions that you get in the central plateau and up in the north. It's pretty spectacular that you have this here and we get to hike right through it. It's so lush. The second you get in here, you can tell that it's so different. You got this beautiful moss growing on all the trees, fungi, big ferns everywhere. It's just magical. Oh, 
can't see. We found Jared's seat. <laughs> now we're out of the forest and look at it. It just changes now. So much drier. You can see Cape Pillar all the way out there. And the lighthouse of Tasman Island is actually jutting up above it, which is cool. You get these huge cliffs and a few little sea caves down here and some sea arches as well, where all the dolorites collapse. Pretty damn cool. The last little mini adventure we're doing on the Three Capes hike is to hike all the way out to Cape Hoy. It's about 1.7k one way. They say two hours return if you just want to chill and enjoy. But to make things even easier, we can just leave our backpacks at the little Three Capes baggage storage area. It's just out in the open though, so you've got to cover your bags with a pack cover so the Currawongs don't get in there and steal all your food. So anyway, we're going nice and light. We've just got some snacks in here, a little bit of lunch and some water, and we're going to charge out to Cape Hoy and see what the views look like out there. Cool. Let's go! This is the view that we've got. So we've come down this side and now we're going to follow the path up there to the top and we have a little bit more hiking to do just once we get to the top and then we should get the viewpoint. Lots of stairs on the way up and there's going to be lots of stairs on the way back. <laughs> More stairs to go up here, but look at this view. You don't even think about it. It's a little bit up, down, up, down, but we're getting there. We have made it to Cape Hoy Lookout. Look at this, guys. Holy moly. I tend to be saying that a lot this weekend. finish this now we're heading to here well that's it we've come back from the Cape and we're doing the last little section to Fortescue Bay and uh, yeah this one's only 2.8 kilometers I think we've got to go so maybe like 30 minutes 40 minutes and then that's it we're done lots of stairs down to the bay Ooh. here it is three capes track we made it to the sun. Now we just got to follow it and get to the campground. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Well Look done, at that Lish. beach. Look at that beach that we're going to go swim at. Down to sea level now. That's Fortescue Bay behind us. And the end of the track. Just there. Almost done. Just got to wait for Alicia to catch up and then sign on out. Fresh sea air smells amazing. Mm -hmm. oh. Smells better than I do. <laughs> That's why we need to go have showers. Ah, uh, all right, let's end this track. Fortescue Bay, we made it. And that's where we're about to go, in the water. The last part is that you actually get a bus back to the Port Arthur Historic Site, or if you need to go back to Hobart or another place, they can organise that for you too. But this is it. End of the trail, we're gonna jump on this bus and get reunited with our beautiful van back at the Port Arthur Historic Site. That's it, we're back at the Port Arthur Historic Site now. We've picked up our van, we're showered, we're nice and clean. <laughs> we don't stink anymore. <laughs> Ready to call it quits. <laughs> this hike was so amazing. The accommodation was incredible. The huts are like next level. The track was really accessible. It had boardwalk plus also gravel, which was very well maintained. I was very impressed. It was absolutely beautiful. The cliff, the coastal cliffs, weren't they? Yeah, some of the oh, highest coastal cliffs so in the beautiful. Southern Hemisphere. I think. Even though it's an expensive hike and yeah. that you have to pay, you know, almost $500 to go on it, the bang for your buck that you get mm -hmm. in terms of accessibility, the views mm -hmm. and the quality of accommodation and services along the way, it makes it worth it. But also at the beginning, there's the boat ride and then the end, you get dropped off back where your car is. So it kind of works out really well. It's all just included. You don't need to worry about anything, tents, sleeping mats, um, cooking stuff. They've just got everything for you. Yeah, mm. it was a real amazing experience. If you like the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up and a comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll keep bringing out more videos <laughs> yeah, every week. We will. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye guys.